my loves! Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, hello, my name is Loey. I changed my hair and I do hope you like it. I've been so into like pink wigs for years and I would always buy pink wigs in this exact like cut too with a little bit of a bang. Today we're gonna be talking about something that has absolutely just captivated my attention so fully for several weeks now. I fell down such a rabbit hole about the Radium Girls. And if you guys have never heard about this case, it's genuinely one of like the darkest things that happened in US history. This is also the reason that we have OSHA and why it's like illegal for employers to make their employees sick. OSHA stands for Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And it all kicks off in the early 20th century. In 2023, there's so much science backing up why radioactive materials are so harmful to us. But back in the early 20th century, radium had actually only quite recently been discovered and was heralded as kind of a miracle product. When radium as a powder is mixed with water, it forms this like luminescent shiny liquid that people were just mesmerized by. For these reasons, it was used in makeup and beauty products, but also in medicines and various medical treatments as it was believed that radium could cure pretty much any disease. However, while radium seemed like this wonder drug at the time, this incredible substance that could kind of do it all, people had no idea the intense effects that it would have on their bodies. And the more that people ingested it, used it in their cosmetics, or worked with it barehanded, the more that the side effects of radium began to be realized, and still none of these people could have foreseen what happened next. In the 1920s and 1930s, a new job opportunity had opened up for women across the United States. This job opportunity was actually working in factories to paint the faces of watch dials with none other than radium. Pretty much as soon as radium was discovered, big corporations and companies wasted zero time hopping in on the radium trend. One big company that we're focusing on today was called the US Radium Corporation, and they opened up a factory in New Jersey where they hired women to start painting the dials of watch faces with glow in the dark radium. This was so that people could see their watch faces after dark, of course. It also was an incredibly trendy thing at the time. Everyone was using radium in literally everything, so it was a good marketing tool. And they hired women for this job because typically women have like smaller and more agile hands, so they could paint the faces of the watches much easier. In the beginning, about 70 women were first brought in to work at this particular factory in New Jersey. None of them knew that this job was hazardous by any means. There were no red flags for these women to speak of. This company was offering three times more than what the women might make at other factory jobs, and everyone believed that radium was entirely harmless, if not like actually good for you. A day on the job for these women usually entailed them painting very small numbers onto the dials of watches. Now, you have to remember, a watch is like on your wrist, right? They're pretty small. And the brushes had to be really, really, really precise to get the numbers just right. And so the girls who worked at this factory were instructed to do something called spit painting. The factory told the girls that in between strokes, they would need to lick the tip of the brush in order to get it perfectly precise to paint the numbers onto the watches with radium. It's said that women licked the brushes two to three times per watch dial in order to keep the brush pointed and precise. Each woman on average was also painting like 200 plus watch faces per day, so they had to move quickly. The faster you worked, the more you were praised. And so women were licking these brushes like 400 to 600 times per day at least. These women were also not just blindly ingesting radium. I want to make that really clear. Nobody knew that it was dangerous. And when the women who worked at this factory did ask their management, like, hey, is it really safe to be ingesting this much radium? 
Their higher ups would say, yes, of course, it's completely safe. We know that radium is entirely safe for consumption. They were told repeatedly that radium was just fine. In fact, it was used as a health product. It was used in cosmetics. Marie Curie was a pharmacist and a chemist who actually discovered radium. And Marie Curie did huge, huge things in the world of research around radioactive materials. Marie loved radium. And while she was researching it, she would often like walk around with a little vial of it on her at all times. At the time of Marie's death in 1934, she understood the effects of radium much more intricately than she once had, as the cause of her death was actually brought on by radium. She developed a plastic anemia and it was believed that it was linked to the amount of like radioactive material that she was around all the time with very, very little safety precautions. But back to our radium girls who, especially in the 1920s, would not have any reason to suspect that radium was anything but perfectly healthy to lick off of a paintbrush every single day. The paint that they use for their watch dials was made out of a mixture of water, radium powder, and glue. And it emitted this beautiful, like glowing green light. And sometimes when they were leaving the factory, the radium girls would even use it as makeup, dotting their cheeks with it or using it as lipstick. Even if they did not use the paint for cosmetic purposes, usually these women would go home and you could literally see them in the dark. On their walks home at night from the factory, people would spot them glowing in the dark, covered in traces of radium powder and the paint that they used all day long in order to paint these watch dials. And so they started being called ghost girls due to their glowing skin and hair. What the girls didn't know then, but they were unfortunately soon to find out, was that they were working with a silent killer. An element that was slowly eating their bodies from the inside out, day after day, shift after shift. As time went on and the women were exposing themselves to radium more and more and more, they started to notice severe side effects. In the mid-1920s, many women started suffering from chronic fatigue, anemia, and also rapid weight loss. The first girl that seems to have appeared with these symptoms, at least in a quite serious capacity, was named Amelia Molly Maggie. Now, Amelia came to the doctor one day complaining of a toothache. The tooth was removed, but Amelia was still in a lot of pain. She was noticing just a lot of pain in her jaw and in her teeth specifically. So she went to the dentist where they performed several additional teeth extractions. But this led to a devastating and painful cycle for Amelia. Every time one of her teeth was extracted, she would develop an ulcer. That cavity would get infected. Slowly that infection spread throughout her entire mouth and then through her entire body. Amelia was quoted as saying that it felt like her whole body just ached. Like her body was burning from the inside to the point where she couldn't even walk. Her symptoms resembled those of rheumatoid arthritis, so her doctor prescribed her with that never took into account her work occupation or the hazards that she was exposed to on a daily basis. Doctors just prescribed her aspirin for pain and sent her back to work and on her way. By May of 1922, Amelia was in an incredibly, incredibly painful state. Her entire jaw and neck were covered in abscesses and she still had that dang toothache. So she went back to the doctor again, but this time was different. While the doctor was examining her lower jaw and her teeth, Amelia's entire higher jaw came off in his hands. Her jaw fully dislocated from her skull and literally just fell off of her body. No operation, no anesthesia, no nothing. Her jaw just came off. And just four months after this, Amelia passed away at the young age of 24. No one at the US Radium Corporation or even her own doctors and dentists correlated her working environment with her cause of death. And unfortunately, Amelia would not be the only loss to radium at this factory alone, not by a long shot. By the time of Amelia's death, many, many women had started noticing side effects from working with radium on a daily basis. 
they would complain of their bodies aching, but continued to work, having no idea that their health problems were correlated to working with radium every single day. And the authorities and management and higher ups at the US Radium Corporation were telling every single woman there, hey, radium has curative properties. If you're not feeling well, maybe take some more radium when you get home. This stuff was like a tonic in people's medicine cabinets. It was everywhere. But the radium that these women were ingesting on a daily basis was radioactive. It was incredibly, incredibly dangerous. And the side effects just continued to roll in. Many women experienced their teeth falling out, their bones literally crumbling inside of their bodies. They were in excruciating pain 24 seven. And doctors are so puzzled because it's not even known that radium is dangerous to be around. They have no idea what they're dealing with and the illnesses went undiagnosed, leaving doctors just so confused. The radium was basically eating these women's bones from the inside out. The bones have become porous from constant exposure to radium and had developed large holes, making them brittle and prone to breaking. For some women, this ended in their spines collapsing. For others who didn't have it as seriously, they would notice themselves growing shorter as the radium continued to eat at bones inside of their bodies, and some developed tumors and cancer. At this point, the radium poisoning was so high that some of the women's bones were actually glowing in the dark. So after Amelia died in 1922, many other people are starting to notice symptoms. And doctors are like, we don't know what's going on. Scientists are like, we don't know what's going on. And it isn't until one doctor in particular comes out with a study correlating all of these crazy illnesses and side effects with like the repeated exposure to radium on a daily basis that anyone started to listen. Dr. Harrison Martland set out to investigate the link between the deaths and specifically working in the dial painting industry using radium. The reason that this doctor had started looking into dial painting specifically as an occupation that could lead to people's deaths is that by 1924, the US Radium Corporation alone had 50 women who worked at the plant seriously ill while a dozen had died. Because they were saying that the women were dying of syphilis in an attempt to embarrass them. Because if they're all sick from an ST, if there's just this STD that's running like rampant through all of these women in the factory, then they'll probably stop talking about being sick, right? Because they'll feel so ashamed. So Dr. Harrison Martland begins investigating into this. And after looking over the bodies of multiple deceased women who had worked at the US Radium Corporation, he came to a conclusion that he had seriously feared. The radium that they had ingested had settled into their bones, causing them to decay and break down. But when these findings were presented to the US Radium Corporation, they didn't have the reaction you might expect. Owners of the company refused to accept any of the findings, citing them as baseless. And they continued to expose their workers to radium on a daily basis, not telling them to change a single thing. The US Radium Corporation did not care if these women were sick or dying due to repeated radium exposure in their factories. In fact, they were so greedy and so twisted at this point, they even published their very own biased studies with fabricated results showing that radium was not only safe to be used, it was also a health product. Remember how they keep saying that it's a health product? It's like a cure-all for everything. It's fine. It's the miracle potion of the 20th century. Yeah, they used biased research and fabricated results to back up that claim. The first woman to speak up against these deadly working conditions was named Grace Fryer. Grace had worked at the New Jersey firm of the US Radium Corporation and was now suffering with severe side effects. She had to start wearing a steel back brace because her spine literally collapsed. And she kept hearing through the grapevine that radium wasn't nearly as safe as people had led her to believe. And so she decided to start a lawsuit against the US Radium Corporation. And no lawyers were ready to take on the big monopolies of that time let alone start looking at changing the law. 
However, there was one lawyer in particular who took her case. His name was Raymond Berry, and he was a young, ambitious lawyer who was determined to get justice for women who had fallen ill or died at the hands of this company. Grace was joined in her lawsuit by four other women who worked at the factory who were all struggling with similar illnesses. Their names were Edna Hussman, Catherine Schaub, and two sisters named Quinita McDonald and Albina Laris. And they were nicknamed by the media, the Radium Girls. The US Radium Corporation was livid and hired huge, huge lawyers in order to fight their case. In the end, with the help of Dr. Martland's findings, Raymond Berry was able to convince a jury that the US Radium Corporation was responsible for the deaths and illnesses of these women. The case caught the attention of everyone in the company who was shocked to realize that the radium that they took to cure everything from the common cold to applying it as lipstick to go out at night was so, so dangerous. The radium girls were on the front page of every single paper, actual poster childs for what happened to those who were unfortunate enough to get so mixed up in an element that people previously had thought was so harmless. In 1928, the jury awarded the plaintiffs with a $10,000 settlement each, along with a $600 annual payment. And of course, this was huge money at the time. $10,000 in 1928 is the equivalent of $175,000 today. And while that settlement was a victory for the Radium Girls, it came far too late. They had all already suffered irreversible damage to their bones in their bodies. Many of them had already died of their illnesses, and the rest of them that lived long enough to see that money died within the next few years. And it's awful to think that these women will never fully get justice for what they went through. I mean, I don't know that anything could ever be justice for what they went through, but what they did do was pave a path of success for future women to come forward with the same claims. There was another case in Illinois where a lawsuit was brought against the Radium Dial Company in 1938. The lawsuit was filed by a former employee named Catherine Wolf Donahue, who had suffered from radium radiation poisoning due to her work. Her story is also so sad. She literally had to give evidence to the court while quite literally on her deathbed. Like she was dying as this court proceeding was going on. And Catherine would pass away from radiation poisoning before she would see the final verdict of her case which is that she won. The production of radium watches would continue until 1968. However, working conditions did significantly improve. And in 1970, the Occupational Safety and Health Act was passed. Congress created the Occupational Safety and Health Administration in order to provide safe and healthy working conditions for employees across the nation. Every single day of their lives, these women showed up at work ready to do their job for the day not knowing that their environment was making them seriously, seriously ill. And after they realized it, long after it was too late and their fates were already sealed from radium poisoning, they made the incredibly brave choice to take on one of the biggest corporations in the United States in the 1920s. While quite literally on their deathbeds, these women had to fight in order to even make the company admit that they had done anything wrong whatsoever, or that radium was poisonous in any way. It's devastating that most of them did not even live long enough to celebrate their victory. However, through their lawsuit, they saved the lives of so many people who never would have known any better. It's the story of ultimate greed, corruption, and justice. And it's a fight we shouldn't forget, even a hundred years later. That was the story of one of the darkest cases in US history, the Radium Girls. I'm so curious to hear what you guys thought about this video. For now, if you did enjoy, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. An extra special thank you to my subscribers who are members of this channel. If you wanna join my channel memberships and get cool members exclusive perks such as members only videos, channel emotes and loyalty badges and so much more, you can click that little join button. It should be somewhere around the screen. We would love to have you. I love you, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!